Hey, and we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake, and today we're talking about Final Fantasy 16. This one is a big deal. As someone who loves jumping into every one of the mainline games since like six, uh, this new one has marked a shift that I was very curious to see. You know, it's it's going for a mature tone. It's from some of the Final Fantasy XIV and Devil May Cry designers and a shift away from standard RPG battling and grinding to character action and spectacle. It also could right some of the wrongs of the more flawed but cool ideas of Final Fantasy XV and run with them. So Final Fantasy XVI here has a strong team behind it and some great new ideas and incredible moments, but there is no doubt in my mind this is a modern Final Fantasy game through and through, and that means, like a lot of the more modern ones, there is some great stuff here and also plenty of flaws. There's still a lot to like with this one, but I think your mileage might vary greatly depending on your preferences and what kind of player you are. Some of my complaints might not matter to some of you. You know, it seems like people are head over heels for this game. I like it, but it's, it's not my favorite Final Fantasy. It, it's a complicated one, but it's fun to talk about. So some housekeeping here, just so you know, this footage was captured on PlayStation 5 and we did not get a review copy very early, only like a day before launch or so. So these are some first impressions just to give you some information. And this video is as spoiler free as possible. We mostly show stuff in the opening hours after the demo, but in order to give you like a sense of the full game, we do show a handful of later combat scenarios when the combat is more unlocked. You need to see some of that just so you know what's up. Like we're, we're we're being careful here, but we warned you. So, of course, it has to be acknowledged. I, I think it's fair. People ask, you know, newcomers and stuff, you don't need to play all of the other Final Fantasy games or anything like that. This is a new adventure, new world, new characters, new story. So you're good. And in this, it's a dark and gritty-ish medieval fantasy adventure spin on things featuring main character Clive. And Clive is a lot of things, you know? He's edgy video game protagonist. That's, that's the easy one on the surface, but really he's a son of a king from a long since fallen kingdom. He's a warrior slave kind of, and, and, and one of a select few chosen ones that can wield some over the top power and someone with a deeply personal story with actual problems in his life on this adventure. Also, he has a dog. Clive, in my opinion, is a solid Final Fantasy protagonist. You know, there's a lot of room for him because unfortunately his friend circle is pretty small. This game does have like one of the best SIDS in all of the Final Fantasy games. Absolutely love him. Just had to drop that. But Clive will have some allies in battle, but it's not a party system. No, you're just playing as Clive himself. And the game ditches turn-based RPG or hybrid action type things for just full on straight up Devil May Cry or Bayonetta-like combat. For some, including myself, as much as I worship the ground that Devil May Cry walks on, that is still very hard to get over this change. You know, I always like seeing Final Fantasy games try to change it up from the RPG side, but this is a pretty big jump. Thankfully though, the combat is pretty solid and satisfying. So Clive has main slashing attacks, ranged magic blasts, and these can be combined mid combo in a cool way or you hold the buttons down to charge them up. Then there's a dodge, a perfectly timed dodge that will open up the enemy to a counter. There's a jump, a downward hit, eventually a forward thrust, a quick zip to an enemy. Uh, and then from there, there's even more powerful abilities you can activate with the right trigger and a face button that are on cooldowns. These can be boosts, striking up an enemy in the air, or a massive smash, or an area of effect type crowd control attack, and, and some cool things that we won't spoil. These get more complex as the game goes on because you start with fire attacks and eventually pick up wind, kind of lightning, and some others that we won't spoil, but you can swap between them and build up. Uh, all abilities have use cases, and you can swap on the fly, like say use a special attack to whack an enemy up into the air and then combo them and then switch to another power group to slam them back to the ground or yank them closer to you and trigger something else. It's kind of like swapping weapons or stances mid combo in a Devil May Cry game, although here it's just swapping complete magic subsets. It's all about stacking damage or stun. So enemies have a secondary bar that when depleted will open them up for more damage from attacks. So you need to use the right attacks to whittle that down. So between all that, 
unleashing special attacks on enemies when the time is right, learning attack patterns and nailing perfect dodges, it can feel really nice. Some enemies are really spongy and you're just whacking them forever, and it's not always the most challenging, but it has some good moments here and there when you're really getting bodied or you're waiting for your dog Torgal to help you out or you're chugging potions, like, it can be a thrill. It's not absolutely perfect, you know? Sometimes if you're just not on the ball, you'll feel like you're just doing the same attack over and over, and the lock-on is not that great. And also, because of that, it's not often easy or clear to tell when you're being attacked from behind off camera by an enemy. Like, there's indicators of where enemies are, but many games have done this better. Also, the camera will just screw you over sometimes. <laughs> Those are certainly issues but it's issues in otherwise the thing that is probably one of the better parts of the game. Combat is cool and intense, and in certain story moments where you take control of these big monsters, it only gets even more over the top. A large part of this game is actually centered around these big, powerful, mythical creatures. The archetypes we've seen in many Final Fantasy games, from summons to aeons or whatever they're called in the specific game, uh, they're like really celebrated here. And it's really cool to see them tie so closely into the story and the gameplay. And the game just kind of has fun with it. And it makes for some of the most downright balls out, crazy, jaw dropping spectacle I've seen in a game in a long, long time. The boss battles and the big moments are absolutely wild and thrilling, and they don't just like come and go. There is some like drawn out chaotic battles that are sometimes just unbelievable. I think some people might argue that some of the simplified attacks from these monsters might overstay their welcome, but for me, I was just there for all the crazy over the top quick time events and crazy cutscenes. I was just into it. Now, when you're not doing all that cool stuff, that's unfortunately where the pacing can drag and some of the issues for some people are gonna crop up. When the game slows down, some of the moment to moment gameplay just isn't as exciting. It is extremely linear for the most part, save for some areas here and there that are more open and explorable. Now, don't get me wrong, for me personally, that's not a bad thing. I don't need a massive open world, but I do want the things I do in linear areas or those in-between boss battles to be interesting or compelling, and frankly, not a lot of it is. The hub areas, you know, like the towns, are often pretty gorgeous from an art perspective, but are often kind of lifeless. You know, most side characters don't stand out and provide much value at all, other than a shop for items, a blacksmith for upgrading, and a kind of lore codex you can visit to level up and update. Side quests mostly feel like early game simple side quests. Like, you know when you start an open world like big adventure game or something like that, and the first side quests are really easy and boring just to kind of get used to the game? A lot of the quests here unfortunately continue to feel that way once you're hours and hours in. A lot of the stuff you do is simple, it's over in a few minutes, not very exciting or rewarding, and not contributing to the story. And that's a damn shame. And not just the side quests, but anytime you're not in like a boss battle or a big siege area or just a story heavy moment, the stuff you do just isn't as exciting. The story still can be, don't get me wrong, you know, the characters talking and interacting and stuff, and some of the journey is cool, but going from place to place, fighting some random non-story enemies, they just tend to be less exciting battles and ultimately unfulfilling. I think the game is so extreme and awesome at times that the smaller, quieter parts need to feel meaningful and exciting in their own unique ways to really stand out and keep up, and oftentimes they don't. I think the other thing that does hurt is the RPG elements. There are not a ton of them. Again, I'm open to a Final Fantasy game shaking it up, but instead of just ditching them all together, they keep them but really bare bones in a game that still otherwise feels like it, it, and it's structured like an RPG. So the moment to moment stuff that feels dull is dull in part to the fact that you're not really getting very exciting loot or any sort of progression. You know, swords look a little cosmetically different and you want higher numbers, but there's not much to it. And the same goes for gauntlets and a belt you can equip for bonuses. You can get better ones to increase stats, craft your own at a blacksmith or upgrade them with certain materials, but there feels like there's an endless endless list of named crafting materials that you have no connection with picking up. It's never exciting to slay an enemy and get a good item or loot or wander off and find a treasure chest that feels like your little exploration was rewarded. You don't really get that feedback loop. The skill trees are decent though. You can learn new moves for each of your magic ability trees and then spend even more to master them. 
And this is like kind of like a workmanlike, good, simple skill tree. Final Fantasy games often stumble over themselves trying to like make character upgrades unique or reinvent a system completely and make it kind of weird. But here they keep it simple and I don't mind the skill tree stuff. It's just the rest of it. The stuff I already mentioned, you know, the character stats, the items, the buffs, it's not much. There's so much menus and numbers, but like none of it really means anything and you're not gonna care that much. I just found myself kind of mindlessly clicking whatever got me the most power and not thinking much of it and really just looking forward to the next big monster showdown or 10 minute cutscene, which on a good note, hell yes. Cutscene lovers, rejoice. Where are my Metal Gear Solid 4 fans here? <laughs> this, is a, this is a big story with a lot of dialogue and drawn out story moments, and it can be a blast. This game is at its best when the actors are just acting, the vibes are there, the battles are being obnoxious and explosive, the music is being incredible, just Final Fantasy music. All the presentation stuff is a really great experience. The only other disappointment for some might be the performance. Now you can choose between two modes. There's graphical fidelity mode and performance frame rate mode. The frame rate mode drops the resolution and it can be a little noticeable. The game can feel a little bit blurry or a little bit softer looking and the sacrifice doesn't feel as worthy. Like I wouldn't normally point that out, but it's specifically because it's not a locked 60 frames. In combat, it usually fares well, but the, the rest of the game, it's like all over the place. Then fidelity mode is just a locked higher resolution resolution 30. At the very least, it feels like a very locked and consistent 30, but for a linear action combat game, I was hoping for more. Maybe there will be patches to clean up the frame rate mode. I don't know for sure, but I, I just wanted to point that out. Uh, and despite all this, the game otherwise is not like a lot of other releases where they're like an undercooked mess. You know, I haven't really ran into any major bugs or glitches or anything like that at all. So that's a plus at least. Now, Final Fantasy 16 can be absolutely tremendous, dude. Like as much as some of the gameplay and RPG stuff kind of disappointed me, the highs are really, really damn high here. Focusing on a character with pain in a more, in a more brutal, gory, F-bomb laden world than we've ever seen in a Final Fantasy before is pretty refreshing. We've seen this in other games, but not in that special Final Fantasy way. And with that, they still somewhat delivered. The story starts to lose some of its focus, some of its more interesting ideas, and get goofier and kind of goofier as the time goes on. And that seems kind of, eh, you know, but it's definitely not the first Final Fantasy game to do that, but it is still worth noting. And I'm glad there's a demo. So so you can try before you buy. A lot of you probably already have. But the demo doesn't really show the quieter, less exciting parts or the disappointing parts. Still, I think this is going to end up being a significant Final Fantasy for many people. It may not be my favorite, but there are plenty of redeeming qualities, depending on whether you're playing for the quests, the story, or the combat, and really how much you're willing to slog through to get to the cool parts. It's hard because even though there are a few parts of the game I'm disliking, the big awesome moments I'm going to remember for like a really long time. And I play a lot of games and my memory is basically broken, but still. Some stuff I definitely didn't like in this one, but ultimately I'm still going to recommend it to some of you, just given that you do your homework and make sure some of the downer parts of the game, you're going to still manage to either disagree with me on or feel like it's worth it to get to the better stuff. But hopefully this helps you decide for yourself. This is of course a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion. And now I wanna hear yours down in the comments. What is your experience with the Final Fantasy series? Have you been playing since the very old days? Are you like me? Did you jump in about halfway through? Was Final Fantasy 13 your first RPG? Was it 14? Was it 15? Is it going to be 16? Will this be your first Final Fantasy? I'm excited for you either way, whether it's the good reviews or bad reviews, have fun. Let's talk about this game and this series that I really Really love down in the comments. Now, if you like this video, all you got to do is click the like button. It genuinely helps us out. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your patience with this before you buy video. I know it took a while to get out. We didn't want to half-ass it. If you've been watching these for years, I cannot thank you enough. These projects are my baby. So love you. See you guys next time.